are good. Oh, and Lord, you are good, and your mercies endure it forever. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are good, and your mercies endure it forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We do you worship. We worship.
worship you. I live, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. Make it personal. Speak to him and make that song a personal song. In your heart. If that is what you want to be. Just whisper. from your heart. Your mouth can scream, but your heart can only whisper. Let your heart whisper to heaven, Father, I know that's why I was born. May my life's purpose be fulfilled. Your presence is Today I'd like to share with you, and uh, I will try to pause as there's two languages being translated, Chinese and Spanish, and give time to the translators. Today I want to speak to you about God's wind or the breath of God. In John chapter 16, in verse 16, speaking about the Holy Spirit that he would send as he was leaving, he said, it's necessary that I go so I can send the comforter, the lawyer. And he said, he will guide you. I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Another comforter. So Jesus was a comforter to the people he ministered to. We hear of him as angry against the Pharisees. We see him healing. We see his visiting with people, but we don't think about him as a comforter. He said, another comforter. And we have known him in so many ways in his power, in his anointing, in his anger, but not as a comforter. And yet, so many. And it says, I will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. <clears throat> Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you shall know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. 
the spirit of truth. First, the spirit. This word in Greek is pneuma, that we have pneumatics, which means the movement of air, a gentle blast, the wind. Therefore, the wind itself is what it means, but not the blowing wind on earth but the wind that comes out of the nostrils and the mouth. Wind coming out of the mouth and the nostrils. That's what spirit means. And then it says there's a spirit, that breath, that wind coming out of the mouth moving air is truth. God is truth. The Spirit of God is truth. That's what Jesus said. The Spirit, the wind, the breath of truth. In Genesis chapter 2, we see in verse 7, God had formed man from the dust of the earth, of the ground, made his body. And it said he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The wind from the mouth of God the breath of God made a body that was not alive to become alive. So Adam was filled with the spirit of life and the spirit of truth. Before he created Adam, God breathed and in his breath was a word, let there be light. Let the continents come up from the water. Those words were God's breath. They were alive. They were spirit. God is a spirit, John said. And God, by a breath, and with a breath, to form the words of the command, he made the sun, he made the galaxies, he made the heavens, he made the earth. And on that earth, he made a garden. And Genesis 2.15 says, And the Lord God took man and put up put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And verse 16, And the Lord God commanded man and said, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. How many times, how many times I've seen in my own life, when you eat of that forbidden tree, you begin to die. You begin to die. And thank God that the wind, the breath, by the Holy Spirit, the holy breath of God, time and time again, he breathes upon me and I live again. 
I know what it is to feel dead. I know what it is to feel abandoned. I know what it feels that God is so far away. I know what it feels like so many. When you hear the sound of God, the words of God, you want to run. You want to run. You don't want to come closer. You don't want to say, come. The poison of that tree of death that we have even in our phones, that tree growing. We have, it would seem, in our even soul and body for sure, that tree is growing. And we begin to die. We begin to not care anymore. We forget that all we have to do is run there and say, God, I sinned. I'm sorry. Breathe again. And oh, how wonderful it is. And I'm sure many or all have experienced, as some of you perhaps has, has not experienced yet what it is to pass from death to life. Some of you might not even know. Maybe you've gone to church, maybe you think it's about singing, but when that breath of life from the very mouth of God, the breath of God, blows into you, your spirit becomes alive. Alive. In the vision of Ezekiel, there was stone, there were bones in the desert. And God said, Prophesy, call the winds to come. And the winds blew, and those dry bones began to grow sinews, muscles, flesh, skin. As the wind blew, as the wind blew, as the wind, as God blew from the four corners of the earth, the dead bones like that form of Adam begin to become a body and then that body came alive and became a powerful army oh what glory it is to receive the breath of God and as many times when I thought I would, could never, ever come back to his presence or worship him or love him, that I have sinned, that I could never get out of that hole. And yet, a wind. Do you remember the prophet Elijah? Hiding in the cave, awaiting death, because he was being followed and sought after by Jezebel, the queen, to kill him. And he had a death sentence upon his head, and he knew it. He was going to be killed in any moment. So he went in the cave to die. He was no longer a prophet. He was not longer full of the word from on high of God. He was there shivering like a weak man, full of fear and awaiting death. And then a still, small voice, wind that carried the sound of a voice.
And Elijah ran outside. He didn't care if the soldiers were watching and waiting. And threw himself to the ground as the breath of God blew upon him. And he was restored and had a great mission ahead to accomplish. To put a king over Israel. So many trees in the Garden of Eden. So many trees of all kinds to do and give everything mankind could ever need. And yet, only one, only one that was a tree of, of death. Why are we attracted? Although we know, why are we always attracted to that tree? To the tree that separates us from God. I don't know why, but it's inside of us. It's like a magnet that draws us to anger, that draws us to a belief, that draws us, that speaks to us and tries to make us doubt in the one who created us and breathes life. It's a tree of deceit, of lies. Jesus said in John chapter 8, he said, there is no truth in the devil. And the devil was in that tree. Whenever something, a sickness starts coming upon your heart, your spirit, you start becoming weak. You know there's a serpent whispering to you. And the more you hear, the more you listen, the more death comes in. You don't care. It doesn't matter. You're willing to let everything go and forget everything he's done. Oh, that attraction that is in us towards that tree. We find ourselves drawn. And there's so many trees of blessing. So many roads of life. And yet inside of us, we're drawn to the words of a liar. John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil, and the lusts of the father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and did not abide in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Everything you hear that is not on the breath of the Spirit is a lie. How much, how much truth has to be embedded into a lie for it to be dangerous? How much poison, how many drops in a glass of water clean, pure water, how many drops does it take to make it poison? Yes, he still whispers thousands of years later to the hearts of man, drawing them to give up the trees and fruit of Eden. For the knowledge of a tree that will only destroy us. He speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. He is a liar and the father of all lies. And Satan deceived Eve 
by lying or giving a little bit of lie in a lot of truth. Contaminated the truth. Truth must be pure. The breath of God is pure. The wind of the Spirit is totally true. There's nothing, nothing that is not true of what the Spirit speaks, of what He has heard, what He reminds you of, of what Jesus has spoken. It is all, all true, even if it hurts you, even if you don't believe it, even though you get angry. But there's nothing contaminated with lie, with lie in the words of God. You've probably heard the phrase, I mentioned it the other day, the group of Chinese. The phrase is, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's been attributed to Confucius, the great Chinese philosopher. But of course, by a picture we think about a camera. But there was no cameras in the days of Confucius. There was only drawings. Beautiful, beautiful. The Chinese have have, I think, uh, the best art in the world. The artistry in the museum, I've gone and see what they do, how they engrave and tiny little things. Of course, there was no cameras that could record the truth. It was only drawing made by an artist. So that picture or drawing was what the artist wanted it to be. So what he drew of the emperor, he drew of this, he drew as he wanted it to be. Hmm. I remembered lunch tomorrow with uh, yesterday with the pastors. And after lunch, they asked a waitress to come and take a picture of us. And so she took a picture. And you know how many times you take a picture and it takes about five, ten pictures? A picture, a picture doesn't lie. A picture tells you exactly what it sees. It's not a drawing. It's, it, it's not photoshopped. It, it comes just like it is. Now you can have apps and tell them to do this, to do that. But the picture in itself is the reality, is truth. And so she took the picture, and, and I won't tell you that it was women, but she began going through the pictures. I said, well, show me the picture. No, wait, wait. Were my eyes closed? Was I looking up? Was I looking down? So she found, she didn't change the picture, but she found one that she liked. <laughs> so a picture is worth a thousand, but... We choose the 998 because it's nicer. So the drawings made by the artist is the truth as he wants it to be. In fact, actually, a picture is worth more than 10,000 words. It comes from uh, 1921, an article written by Fred Bernard in an advertising Trade Journal. Now remember, 1921. Okay, you Chinese have to take a calculator to see what Chinese year it is. I, I really don't know what, it, what 1921 was. But in his writing, he was promoting something very novel and never heard about again before, that they should use images in advertisements. That was wow. But those pictures of the product in an advertisement is not the whole truth. It's a lie. I went, oh, I think last month, and I went to buy some cereal. And oh, the picture on that thing, I said, well, this, 
this is a very good, I mean, you look at that picture. It must be true. I had to throw it away. But the picture, a lie. The advertisement, it looks like a lie mixed with a little truth, partial truth. No matter how nice the advertisement is, you cannot believe it. And then, in 1840, the first camera that displayed the truth and cannot be changed. Everyone had to be stiff. And a guy with a chemical, it did flash like that and it took, I don't know how many seconds for the picture to be engraved on the film. There you go, you cannot change it. A picture is worth more than 10,000 words. I saw it. You would think the camera would solve the problem of truth. After all, you can trust what you can see, right? Well, then came along Photoshop. A picture was not a picture. You could not believe a picture anymore. In John chapter 12, 20, it tells us the story of Jesus resurrected. In verse 25, when uh, after Jesus visited the disciples in the closed room after his resurrection, Thomas wasn't there. So disciples said to Thomas, we saw the Lord, verse 25. But he said to them, except I see his hands and the prints of his nails and put my finger into the hole of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I cannot believe. It's fake news. Deep fake. But even if we believe in a picture that you can take with a camera, you might not like that picture. So, we like to keep the truth that we want and get rid of the truth that we don't like. But there isn't two truths. In the world, you can believe anything you want to, but the breath of God is one truth. You might like part of it, and you'll probably hate part of it, but it'll always be true because the breath of God that John said, God is a spirit. Neuma. In the Hebrew, it's rosh. Rach. The breath. A puff. Movement of air. From God, who is all truth. When he speaks, it'll be true. Who... Then, after we lost trust in pictures because of Photoshop, then we have a film, a movie. You can't fake that. It's true. You see it. Until artificial intelligence came. Now, not even a moving picture made of 25 pictures a second can be trusted. They can take this video and make me say anything. They'll even make my mouth move in Chinese and say it in Chinese. They don't even have to translate subtitles. They don't need subtitles anymore because now artificial intelligence takes the movie and, and sees the mouth say, hello, and it changes the mouth to say, Ni hao. And it looks real, real. I saw, I heard John preaching in Chinese. I don't think so. I'm sorry, but I don't know that much. And Jesus said in John 8:32, You shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. The words of God are truth. In Numbers 23, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He has said, shall he not do it? He has spoken, shall he not make good? The truth, I was going to say may, but I, I can't use that. The truth of God will not be pleasant. It will be true. Talking about figures. In the tabernacle of Moses, in the temple also, there was a veil, the one that broke when Jesus arose. And on that veil, there was embroidered in brilliant colors by an artist, the figure of a cherubim. Now the cherubim was the angel God placed with a flaming sword in the door of Eden. So mankind could not go into that garden or paradise without dying, without going through the sword of fire. But that image they made was not real. It was what the artist that Moses chose, because no one had seen a cherubim. Yes, they heard and knew that they had uh, wings. And so you see the ark, the image of the ark with the wings of the cherubim, each one almost touching. Although, well, I won't go there. I was going to say the angels don't have wings, but that's for another day. The cherubim did have wings, it's written. And yet, centuries later, a great inventor and artist named Michelangelo in Rome painted the cherubims in the Sixteen Chapel ceiling. And the paintings, the little small fat babies with little wings. That was his truth. That was his image. This is what it is. This is the truth. Each one can paint the truth you like, but there's only one truth. We can each have our own theory our own point of view, but truth is one. We sadly, the world, the Christian world, shapes Christianity and doctrines into our own perception of what God is, what God wants, and say that is the breath of God, but until the breath of God comes and you realize everything that you thought was is turned upside down and when God says, is this? And we realize we have made like God said we should not make and worship a God in our make and fashion our God according to our thoughts of what truth is, of what God is, of what that breath is. But pure truth is hard to hear. And many times, God will not breathe his breath upon us because we do not want that breath. I know, I know, I know it sounds harsh but so many times I say oh, I want and then when God oh no I guess I don't want 
The pure truth is hard to hear. So you know what man has made? They have photoshopped. You all know what Photoshop is, right? They have photoshopped the Bible. Yes. They have photoshopped the Bible. There are so many translations that hide the truth that hurts. Changes the words. United States here had a president, one of the first presidents called Thomas Jefferson. And he made his own Bible. He took the Bible as they had it then. And he cut out pieces he didn't believe in. And he made the government printer print out a copy of his Bible of truth. And thank God that the Jefferson Bible is only one copy in the museum of Washington. Nobody, nobody wanted his truth. And he was the president of the United States. Yes, they make it into their own. We have Bibles with pictures for children to make it acceptable. I'm sure they're printing a Bible right now for the LGFT, whatever it's called. In Argentina, the gypsies were much, uh, the colony of gypsies, there's a lot of them. They were attracted very much because they believe in God to Carlos Anacondia's revival meetings. And they would just go by the throws. And uh, you have to see a gypsy Bible. It's a Bible with holes in it. Every place where it talks about thou shalt not steal, because they're known for stealing. And so they just cut, you'll, you'll open, oh, wait, there's a piece missing here. And you look in your Bible, thou shalt not steal. They have their own Bible. In fact, in Argentina, they have a Bible for cowboys. In Argentina, the cowboys are called gauchos. They have those big pants, you might have seen a picture. They made a, a Bible for the gauchos. It's called the Bible of Martin Fierro, written by Jose Hernandez. The Bible of the gauchos. So why, why does the truth matter? Why then? When the devil came to, to tempt Jesus, trying to deceive him in the worst of his physical condition and mental and emotional condition after 40 days and nights of being under the hot sun of the desert where he was sent by the, by the Spirit of God. He was weak. He was hungry. There was no water. And he came and tempted him to deceive him And Jesus answered, quoting what Deuteronomy 8, 3 says, which is this, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. Every word by every word that proceedeth, if you look in Deuteronomy 8, every word that proceedeth, it's just one word. Just one word is all those words we have there. But every word that proceedeth, just one word. And it's motsao. And what it means, something that goes out, goes forth, or issues out, 
And where it says, proceeds out of the mouth, the word is peh, and it comes from pa'al, which is not as a word, but it means something that comes forth by a breath. Like the mouth blowing, a puff that blows away. And it has another meaning too. It means a breath that scatters or breaks into pieces. A breath. Last week, I spoke to you about King Hezekiah in Jerusalem surrounded by the Syrian army. And God said through the prophet Isaiah, I will send a blast. And what that word means is a wind, breath, spirit, ruach, God's breath. Again, scattering, breaking in pieces, shattering that breath of God, the power of that breath of God that gives life, that breath can destroy the armies and every devil that's come against us to destroy us with the breath of his nostrils. They're shattered, it's gone. Years of prisons, years of possession of evil, broken. By a breath, by a puff. <sighs> by air, which is spirit, that is moving. <sighs> when I speak, it's air moving when I'm silent I'm full of hot air but when I speak words come out and that's what God does the spirit ruach air in movement so many times I've used this illustration for the past 30 years that I can remember is how Man tries to grab that wind. Now, I tell the illustration of a man on a windy day, he goes up, up in the hill and has a box, and, it's, and the wind is blowing, so it blows into the box, and he closes the box and says, I've got the wind, thinking they can contain the wind. That now I am owner of the truth. I am all owner now my doctrine I've got it right here that's God but they put it into their box or their church or their denomination or their belief but as soon as they close the box it's not wind anymore it's just air and there's nothing there's no life there's no deliverance there's no truth because it can no longer be free to blow as he wishes, not as we wish. He cannot be controlled. You can deceive men, but you cannot control God. The wind blows where it wists. God is spirit. The spirit of truth is wind. Throughout history, God has come time and time again to blow the breath of his spirit to a dead church. A church that has the box, but that's dying or is dead. And time after time, God has visited by his spirit the church because he loves the church. And he's breathed, sometimes on one person, and the wind, the blast, 
destroyed all the works of the devil. Revival came. People were delivered. The church was afire again. Just for a decade to go by. And the wind is imprisoned in a box of doctrines. Truth, what is truth? Only the breath that speaks is truth. And thank God that it's hidden in the scriptures. You might say, yeah, but it says this, says that. Well, but you gotta be so careful. What does it say? What does this translation say? The other translations, but what, how was it written originally? And, 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 and even, is that contaminated? But the word of God, the living word of God, he has spoken in the past and God is still alive. Do you agree with me? It was a time it came out on a mag great, important magazine here. It says God is dead. But no, he's still breathing. He's still breathing upon the church. He's still breathing truth. He's still bringing down the armies of the enemy. God. Would God blow again upon his church like in Acts chapter 2 when the day of Pentecost was come they were all in one accord and suddenly there came a sound of heaven as a rushing of a mighty wind and it blew all the house where they were sitting and there appeared tongues of like a fire that sat on each one of them and they were filled Filled with rush, with the holy wind of God, with the Spirit of God. And they begin to talk in other languages, in other words they did not, but words of truth. So many times, perhaps the reason why God had his Holy Spirit come so we could be moved by the Spirit and speak in tongues is because it's the only way we can tell the truth. Oh, I speak in tongues and I don't know what I said. I said, I'm a terrible sinner, God. And I say, I pray and praising God. Spirit of truth. So in finishing, my desire and prayer is that these days we are gathered together and the special time may not be only a time of teaching as if it were a seminary nothing wrong with teaching not only a time of worship or eating of the bread of his word but may the breath of God breathe upon us in these dire days and weeks. May the wind of the spirit of truth lead us to his truth. Not my truth, not your truth. His breath that is a hundred percent truth that wind that shatters the enemy's fortresses, that heals, that restores, that gives life, that breaks the chains, that delivers, that washes our brains, hearts, and emotions of all lies that the enemy has made us to believe. I can't, I'm a failure, too late, I've sinned, the doors are closed, all those lies, a puff, and it's gone, 
Oh, I live for those moments. That's why it's heaven to me. I love those puffs. It might happen at any moment, whether there's an atmosphere or not, but suddenly, whew, and everything changes. And I know, I know, I know, it's gone. Everything I was going through is gone. The doubts are gone. The enemy pressuring her gone. I don't need to stay awake instead of sleeping. I can sleep like a baby because he has breathed the breath of God. I love the breath of God. It's my hope. It's my hope when I fall, even when I'm taken prisoner, my hope is that my chains will fall when a still small voice says, John, what are you doing there? Oh, this is happening, that has happened. Come on. You're free. Let's start again. It's not over. It's just starting for you. Oh, but I'm getting old. I tell you, the breath. Breath makes you to run as a prophet ran. The breath. Whew. All you have to do is stretch your wings. And you that thought you would become a turkey instead of an ag uh, instead of an eagle. When the wind comes under the wings, just like in an airplane, strong wind under the wings will make you fly. I love it. When I'm crawling on the ground and he blows and I begin to rise up like an eagle, not because I flapped my wings, not because I made promises, not because I took the faith and by faith I'm going to get up. No, 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 I did nothing. Suddenly I'm flying. And the anointing that that breath of God upon our hearts. And when that wind blows, something happened, Jesus said in John 17, 17. When he spoke about the spirit, that wind of truth, he said, now sanctify them through thy word because thy word is true and that word sanctify which he asks the spirit to do to us is hagiadso and it means that his spirit would separate us from the things of this world to consecrate to God what it means, to cleanse, to purify, to free from the guilt of sin. It's all in that one word that Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Your word, the breath out of his mouth, the breath of the Spirit of God that is truth. 
will free us from all evil. And when he blows upon us with his breath of life and truth, even our worship will change. From our mouth sometimes comes out stale wind. We just sing because we have to sing. But suddenly that stale wind from inside becomes vibrant. The spirit inside wakes everything up and our breath is full with the glory of God. God is a spirit and those that worship him, John said in John 4, 24, must worship him in spirit and is true in truth. Father, Breathe upon me. I need the renewing of life of heaven. Restore our souls, our hearts, our minds, our praise. Shatter the chains that the enemy has placed upon us. Blow away like a blast our enemies that have surrounded us, that we might be truly free by the truth of your breath. Father, with expectations, we will begin this convocation that you have made with this one desire in our hearts. Do you want him to breathe upon you? I do. So if you want to join me, breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, I surrender to your name, O Most High. I'm yielding to your Spirit. I yield, Holy Spirit. I'm walking in your love and trusting in your love to me. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Your holy name. Breathe, breathe, breath of God. And fill us afresh with the wind of your spirit. Make these dry bones to live. Restore my soul. Deliver me from my enemies. Life me. Yes. Breathe upon me. That the air in me might become spirit. That the air I begin to move and come out from my inner most being. Renew us. Renew us. Life us. Because you, oh Jesus, are the word. You are the word. 
that the wind of God's mouth speaks. Jesus, you are the voice in the wind, the voice of God. You hear the wind and you speak. You are Jesus, you are the word. Speak the word and we will be healed. Speak the word and we will be delivered. Speak the word and our enemies will flee. Yes, Jesus. 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 Jesus, when you speak, the breath of God makes those words to come into our world. Speak to us these days, I pray. Speak to us. While we're gathered, while we're eating, while we're sleeping. Speak to us. And may life break forth in my heart. As I lift my heart to my hand, saying, I surrender, Lord, everything you want, anything you want to say, I want to hear. Even though I don't like it. Speak to me, please. Speak to me truth. Because you cannot speak anything else. And your truth will take away every deceit, every lying deceit that the enemy has talked to us, has spoken to us, and made us to believe a lie, made us to believe that we were prisoners, led us to believe that we were poor, that we had to live this way, there was no other way. No, there is another way. Breathe upon me. And everything will change. Breathe upon us, O oh Lord. As I live, say your will be done. That I might live with your breath within us. It's all it takes, a breath, a word, and everything changes. Your future changes. Sins are forgiven. Prisons are opened. Oh, Jesus, I adore. I adore. Yes, Lord, you see our uplifted hands in a signal that we're surrendering to you. We ask that you might mark. Mark us, Lord. That we are saying yes, Lord. Come. I don't want to hide like Adam in my shame. I want to come out from the trees I hide in behind. And I want to say, God, here I am. Here I am. I'm naked. And God said, who told you you were naked? Who told you you're in jail? Who told you you can't get out? Who told you that you were naked? I clothed you with light. I covered you with my anointing. And you listen to the one that said you're 
you're unclothed and you're naked and you believed and you let that lie come in and the light that was inside of you began to get darker and darker and darker until there was no more light why God said do you hide and he said because I'm naked I'm broken I've lost everything and God said who told you that it is never lost because I live, I live, I live. Yes, blow away the light, the lies of the evil one. Blast them away these days. Blast away and restore our soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Spirit of the Lord. As I live, my hands in surrender to your name. Not in my love towards you, but in the love that you had for me, Father, that you sent your Son, who because he loved us, no matter what a failure you think you are, he does not love you less, less than when you sinned, less. He loved you and continues to love you as he always has. And sent his son because he loves you. Oh, our enemy tries to make us believe that we're beyond love. That we're not good enough for his love. That our thoughts, that our what our eyes see and our ears hear separate us from God. It's only if you believe the words of the deceiver. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You are the sun, the breath of God. Your holy name, Jesus. Again, I will adore you, Jesus. I will worship you, Jesus. I will be restored. By your holy name, by your holy name, by the breath of God, yes. was the first day of the feast and they were empty they were seeking Jesus they found it hard to find him but he was there he was 
was there. He hadn't revealed himself to them, but he was there. Can you believe that? Or are you listening to the lies of your feelings, the lies of the mind? He is here, and He will remain in our midst. And in a moment, perhaps that you least expect it, He will breathe your name and say, Talita Kumi. You that are dead, young girl, get up and live. <laughs> the breath of God. Like the prophet Elisha, when the women said, My son that God gave me died in my arms, I couldn't keep him alive. He died, I feel that he was so alive, and now it's dead. Elisha said, Bless him on the place upon the bed and he laid on the young boy with his mouth to his mouth nostril to the nostril of the dead boy and breathed and the breath of God through him came into that boy that had been dead for several days you know what happened he coughed <laughs> opened his eyes and he got up the prophet took him by the hand to his mother he that was dead so we have a young girl and we have a young boy those are the only two genders there is so you're one of them you can be the girl, the lady, the young woman, the old woman, that Jesus says, Talita Kumi, live. Or you can say, you can be the man, the boy, that God just breathed through him. And the most wonderful thing is that we don't have to do anything. Adam was laying there, a statue on the floor, made of clay do you think he was saying oh God here I am breathe on me no 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 he was just still full of mud a clay statue and God breathed into his nostrils and he opened his eyes and he was alive oh how wonderful it is how wonderful I love his breath I have survived because of his breath I have felt dead so many times and he came and breathed like Samson that had allowed his power, his hair to be cut off and was surrounded by his enemies in the temple of the devil and he did nothing but as he did nothing it says and the hair of Samson began to grow 
And the Spirit of the Lord said, extend your hand now against the pillars. But I'm weak. It's finished for me. He said, extend your hands to the pillar. And he did. And suddenly, the breath of God in him gave him the power, the superhuman power that two seconds before he didn't have. He was blinded. He was balded. His hair was, his power was taken away. And suddenly, the breath of God surged through his muscles. And he extended his arms and the pillars were moved. And the roof fell upon all his enemies. Hallelujah! That's the breath of God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Nothing that the breath of God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.